Welcome to Commerce Computer Private Limited e-learning program of hardware and networking. We are going to see about uh, memory technologies. So everybody know what is memory. It is the main component of a computer which is required for storing the data temporarily. So without memory, uh, we cannot function with the computer. So it is a key component, right? Processor, memory, hard disk. So these are all the key commerce. Without that, uh, you cannot work. Without mouse, you can work. Without sound card, you can work. Without network card, you can work. Uh, you cannot communicate to other machine otherwise, right? You cannot listen to the music. But as computer, the computer will function, right? Without these kind of interface cards. Whereas without memory, the system cannot boot or system cannot work. So that is why we call it as a key component. So memory, it is used for storing the data temporarily purpose. So um, why I am saying temporary means so it is a volatile memory. Volatile means we have seen already. So when I switch off the uh, power supply, the data in, inside the memory modules, it will be going out, right? It, ca it cannot store it. So and it is a temporary space where the data is getting stored uh, after editing or after opening. Until otherwise, I give control S for saving the document. The document resides in the um, memory space. So if I press save, control S, right, uh, it will be loaded to the uh, hard disk or any other storage medium. Now we get the option to store the data directly to the cloud, OneDrive, all those places, right? So we can store it directly also. So different types of memories available, right? Uh, primary memory and second memory and all. So it involves um, based on the purpose or uh, based on the requirement, we go for different type of memory. So we also have um, optical storage, tape systems, registers, I mean, uh, secondary storage devices. But this memory is a uh, primary storage device, whatever we are going to see now, it is a primary uh, storage area. So each memory modules will be having different capacity and uh, based on our requirement and the budget we can go for it like we can have 4 GB RAM or 8 GB 16 GB so based on our requirement we can have RAM definitely if I'm having a more memory uh, capacity in my cap system the system will be performing better um, the reason behind it suppose I have 4 GB RAM in my system so what will happen uh, the normal uh, loading of programs operating system um, and it is going to occupy some space in the memory module and if I have already opened a, a kind of SQL server or uh, some programs and it is occupying the rest of the space right uh, based on the capacity so there will be some limited amount left out uh, for other applications to load so if I open any word document or any other document so since I don't have enough memory space what happens with the available storage space it get occupied in the memory for the additional requirement the memory uh, what it does it is trying to move the existing data to the virtual memory from its capacity 4 gp capacity whatever it is having it will it will be tried to move from uh, um, this memory module to the virtual memory so that is a memory space provided in the hard disk it will be acting as a virtual memory extension of this physical memory right so for that it takes some time so it is clearing the space as well as it is accommodating your uh, existing new document so when this happens your document is taking more time to load okay so it will not immediately open right so this is one reason why we need to have more, more memory space in your system so as a desktop administrator or um, as a residential user so you should be knowing what is your memory capacity in the computer and um, limit yourself on loading the applications some people have the habit of opening multiple files they will not close at all even for weeks time whether they are using that file or not word document ppt or whatever it is they will not close the documents it will be kept open so because of which what happens it is uh, continuously occupying the uh, memory space right it, it takes some data some 300 kb 500 kb or 1 mb also you take i have 50 uh, files open so it occupies almost a, a good amount of memory right so uh, it is taking system performance as well as memory uh, performance 
so we should be very careful uh, in handling the system so whenever you feel the system is slow just go to task manager system tray right click you will go to task manager and find out uh, how many number of programs and processes are running so you can find out which program is occupying more memory even sometimes you are opening a google chrome and um, you open multiple tabs right you will open only one uh, executable whereas you can uh, open multiple tabs in that you can browse uh, multiple files so e if you e keep on adding uh, multiple tabs right 20 tabs or 15 tabs it is occupying the memory space right so exe will be one but uh, inside the exe you are opening multiple uh, other uh, uh, programs uh, browser so the memory space is being taken up by the applications so if at all any user is complaining or any uh, residential customer is complaining their system is slow just find out the behavior how they work and let them know that um, your system has only this much capacity with your application list so it is occupied 80 percentage already right and uh, if at all you are loading more files it is consuming 90 to 100 percentage which is very close so you, you cannot open multiple files at a time if at all you have this kind of requirement better to upgrade the memory module if it is a corporate office we will raise a request we will get the memory module we will insert it in the system that is a remediation if it is a residential customer residential user so user have to buy the memory module from the market from the electronic shop and insert it so only thing what we have to do we should ensure we are buying the same frequency if there is a mismatch in the frequency pattern uh, suppose one module uh, existing module is uh, 133 megahertz speed frequency and uh, now you are buying another 4 gb which is 166 megahertz there is a mismatch in the frequency right so it may work it may not work and malfunction also so better to find out what is the uh, memory module we have and um, take a photo snap of it so that you, you are not going to miss anything important then you can buy it and come to a house and uh, open the system and insert it and switch on the system that's it nothing additional ins installation is required and you can go to my computer right click on it go to properties you can find uh, uh, memory space memory what is uh, existing available and um, you can ensure that um, earlier it was 4 gb now it is 8 gb you can find okay so almost we have discussed about um, all the uh, memory related issues let, let us see uh, further details features of memory okay so uh, bit what is a bit it is nothing but a binary digit a single digit um, it, it can be represented as a zero or one it is a single bit and uh, byte means eight bits are one byte okay so um, it will be represented by the system so memory will be uh, measured in uh, kilobytes megabytes or gigabyte okay so whatever the data we store in memory it will be measured how much space it is occupying it will be measured in megabytes or kilobytes so one kilobyte is equal to 1024 bytes then um, 1024 kilobytes is equal to one megabyte 1024 megabytes is equal to one gigabyte so it goes on right terabyte and terabyte and all so this is how the memory utilization is calculated so types of memory you have primary and secondary or auxiliary memory available in the system so in this chart i am just dividing as two one is was volatile and another is non-volatile right so though it is a primary memory i am just splitting it as a uh, volatile and non-volatile okay so primary is it is very important memory and uh, we have a cache memory which is um, built as well as which is kept outside the motherboard i mean outside the processor in the motherboard so that is one cache memory that is also a volatile memory that is once power goes off um, you cannot have the data other one is a main memory so in main memory we have two things one is ram and the other one is rom so that's why we are segregating as volatile so ram is a volatile memory whereas rom is not a volatile okay the data whatever it is written it will be permanent so we'll discuss separately for rom um, so here RAM you have two types of RAM uh, we have uh, static RAM and dynamic RAM so static RAM are built based on um, uh, flip-flop or the register uh, using the registers whereas DRAM is built based on the uh, capacitors 
so we'll have different types of technology used so that's the reason um, the static ram that is um, cache memory also start kind of static ram um, it is costlier compared to the dynamic ram okay so main memory rom we have different versions of memory uh, uh, rom available you are going to see one by one so apart from the primary memory you have secondary memory or auxiliary memory which is available for storing more amount of data so you can use magnetic tapes or magnetic disk maybe hard disk or floppy disk or optical disk cd dvd or flash memory your pen drive memory card whatever it is so these are the types general types there may be different types available but for the better understanding uh, we can use this um, uh, types uh, available in the uh, market so difference between dram and sram both are volatile only ram family but uh, what is the difference so dram uh, takes very low power uh, whereas um, it consumes more power because it is the immediate um, uh, contact with the processor and processor will consume the data from cache memory directly okay static ram so it, it process more so it consumes more whereas this dram it is a, a ram available in the system for as a secondary so anything required dram will supply to sram sram will supply to your uh, processor large cell density low access speed uh, made up of transistors and capacitors here it is transistors uh, flip-flop registers right works on the basis of charge and discharge in capacitor sram works in the form of latches on and off um, charging represents ones and zero this requires memory refresh in every few milliseconds um, that's the reason uh, we are because capacitor no so capacitor will um, lose the charge if i am not refreshing right so that's the reason it is consumed um, that's the reason it takes more time comparatively cost wise cheaper but used as a system memory uh, sram is costlier it does not require a refreshing of charges because it is a flip flop gate right and gate or r gate something like that so it, it does not require any uh, refreshment of uh, charges once it is set it is set okay so this is the uh, ram family and moving to the rom rom means um, read only memory it is also a, a memory module only but um, this rom memory is like uh, non volatile where once the data is stored you cannot erase or you cannot uh, modify it just like that okay and you, even if you switch off the system the data will remain in the uh, ic as it is okay so types of rom is uh, pro so earlier the BIOS, the firmware for the computer or important uh, registers will be predefined and written into the uh, ICs, right? Wherever I don't require any changes for the computer to function, right? I need to have a program, but I will not change anything in the program. So those kind of programs will be written in the ROM IC. For example, it is BIOS, okay? And uh, some of the registers, okay? So um, I will burn it. I will I'll burn it using a separate um, circuit. I will insert the program and I will burn the IC. Then I will remove it and insert it into the motherboard. So, uh, manufacturers will generate these kind of things and um, um, do the assembling for the uh, motherboard. Later, what happens? So, we have got advancement in the uh, uh, IC uh, technology. So, we got PROM, programmable read only memory. So, this means that um, earlier there is no possibility of erasing the data now what we can do um, we can erase the data completely and um, we can burn it again using a burner program burner um, ROM burner okay so we can burn the data and um, something like I had a version 2.0 now I have a latest version means I can bring the IC to the um, chip uh, designer chip um, uh, service centers chip level service centers I, if I give the IC they will write a uh, latest to program something like mobile phone you have um, um, If at all you want to upgrade the iOS operating system, what are the ways one is you can take it to the cell phone service center If you give it to them and pay some 250 rupees They will write the latest uh, operating system into the mobile phone within 10 minutes and give it to you Or you can download the latest operating system from internet keep it in the mobile and trigger the installation it will install it okay so either way you can do it if you are av available and um, uh, not know about uh, this thing you can do it by yourself otherwise you have to give it to the uh, cell phone service center same like that now so we can write a, a new program and uh, uh, give it in the um, uh, ICs. next is um, a prom so 
erasable programmable read only memory it is uh, the advanced form of uh, prom by using ultraviolet light so um, instead of using uh, electrical signals what they will do over the ic there will be some window available okay so uh, glass type of window available the burner will be passing the ultraviolet light towards the ic and erase the content now the ic becomes empty then you can write the program so that uh, it becomes a new ic e prom electrically erasable programmable read only memory so it is still an advanced one um, than the uh, eprom here uh, both uh, writing and erasing is done by the electrical signals right nowadays we got flash ram flash rom um, so what happens right um, i'm not mentioned here uh, flash memory is uh, used for your normally bias or any other uh, memory purpose so through software i mean you have programs in your computer right you can download the firmware you can upgrade the firmware so directly the operating system will be having the capability to write the data into the ic so that is a form of flash memory okay so that is how the latest systems are functioning okay so primary storage is also known as a main storage and it is the area where computers are storing the data for quick access because i told in the first slide so if i have to access each and every data from the hard disk hard disk will be faster only but um, each and everything i have to move the tracks go to the sector and take the data and update the data so all these things will be taking more time okay even if it is one second it is a problem for me so all the transactions are happening in milliseconds okay one uh, one ten power minus six right it is one millisecond okay so if i consume one second also i'm i'm losing my uh, uh, time for the overall um, uh, operations cache memory so it is used in very smaller amount uh, for storing the data and easy accessible for the processor so each and every time i cannot go for the uh, ram uh, the dynamic ram whereas i will use the cache memory for uh, faster access secondary memory is your hard disk or floppy disk so this thing we have seen already types of memory um, apart from um, dram sram all those types we can also classify based on the um, um, uh, the technology what we are using so one is virtual memory it is nothing but the hard disk space we are dedicating some portion uh, we can dedicate like 10 percentage of your hard disk uh, to a virtual memory okay so anything excess available in the uh, dynamic ram the data will be moved temporarily okay so that uh, your memory will be free and uh, hard disk will also be utilized okay memory can also be categorized on the basis of semiconductor memory or magnetic memory uh, your hard disk and floppy disk and optical memory or uh, dvd and blu-ray disk types of memory again um, um, uh, with capacity we are mentioning it what are the capacity you have zeta byte right yota byte till yota byte it is mentioned here so normally uh, now hard disk are coming with uh, one terabyte capacity okay one terabyte two terabyte memory um, in servers will have um, this much memory but in systems will have 16 gb 32 gb only so our desktops doesn't uh, require that much memory even if you are having more memory the operating system uh, should be supporting it earlier we had a restriction but now the windows 10 operating system will support a maximum memory so normally 16 gb plus 16 gb 32 gb um, normally your system operating system will get support memory modules so each memory ic is right it will be inserted into the single strip okay so that will be called as a module and we'll be inserting that into a, a computer so now we'll see the um, um, history or uh, the flow of um, memory modules how we got the latest one earlier we had a dip dual inline pin package which is shown in the right hand side uh, you will have a memory holder in the motherboard with different size so what we'll be using we'll get memory modules in the second picture you can see memory modules right we will just insert it based on the requirement like um, 32 kb uh, 1 mb 2 mb so that was the size we used it with uh, this kind of uh, motherboard technology right 1 mb for 1 mb itself i have to insert uh, 4 ic's or 8 ic's based on the capacity so that was very old um, in 286 386 we used that is dip 
so next we got a sip so instead of um, a dual inline package we got a single inline package so you are seeing right one flat um, um, circuit will be available in that the memory ICs will be uh, molded or uh, soldered and you will get only one uh, row one uh, line of pins so that will be inserted into the motherboard so the, the socket will be available in the motherboard so we will directly insert into the uh, motherboard this is again a old one then we got a, a sim the uh, somewhat uh, exact model what we are having now so if i have a sharp pins that is creating problems right uh, uh, if it is getting bent you will lose some data the entire model will have to be thrown out so for that what we are going to do we are having a single inline memory module right so where you will have the pcb circuit board having the contacts directly so you don't have the risk of having separate pins right all ic's whatever i had it earlier i'm just soldering into the uh, circuit board so it is very easy for me to handle the memory modules so we had a 30 pin sim and 72 pin sim with um, different capacity 30 pin sim will be a 16 bit module uh, with 30 terminals 72 uh, sim 72 will be a 32 bit module with 72 terminals it means uh, that much contacts you will have so you had different um, um, technologies used one is fast page memory uh, normally it is used with uh, 30 pin as well as 72 pin uh, sometimes it is extended up to 168 pin dim also so after sim we got dim um, so extended data out it is improved on fpm fast page memory uh, with the 72 pin sim or some 168 pin dim we had it then more than that we had a burst edo improved on edo memory so it is used with 72 pin sim and uh, 168 pin dim so the tech as the technology improves so earlier it was 30 pin sim and all will be having 1 mb capacity okay for 1 mb i will have three ic's in the side and that side also both the sides will be soldered so for 1 mb now uh, improved one for 4 mb 8 mb 16 mb we just got the improved technologies right so um, earlier it was like uh, 8 mb and 8 mb 16 mb modules we had it so i had to insert two modules to uh, fill in right so it is 16 mb something like that rim so again it is another uh, advanced version of uh, uh, dim but it is slower than uh, dim it is having 16 bit database uh, two notches and uh, 184 pins it will have two cuts right rim modules will have two cuts so why they provide the cutters we should not reverse it right so upside down or i mean uh, left to right left to left we should not reverse the connection to avoid it you will have the projections available in the uh, motherboard memory slot so you cannot reverse it see it is not in the center right it is in the somewhat uh, shipped location so you cannot uh, you cannot um, um, reverse the connection uh, left to right or right to left so what happens in the uh, rim slot it has to be filled in so if i have four um, memory slots available so rim had a problem right so it has to be filling all the uh, memory slots if any of the memory slots is open then it cannot communicate it is as if good like uh, uh, as good like you don't have a memory module okay so what they will do what we used to do uh, we will insert the rim modules two rim modules we will insert and two dummy modules we will insert from the market we will buy it so the same uh, um, uh, same circuit board only difference is you will not have ic's in that it is mentioned here no sim c rim okay rim means uh, you will have ic's but the c rim is um, only continuity rim to maintain the continuity they just insert it in the motherboard earlier there were uh, uh, criteria or program done like that each slot should be filled in later it was uh, removed so we don't have that kind of uh, dependency so rim and sim is not used anywhere now um, uh, but uh, for knowledge purpose we should understand even if you go to uh, places where they have old machines you cannot find uh, sim or uh, dim it is very rare so now whatever we are seeing it is uh, dim dual inline memory module right and with that we are also having a ddr memory okay double data rate whatever data rate we have we had earlier so more than that we are increasing the data rate it means it will be more fast than the earlier one 
and with single uh, memory model we are going to have 4 GB 8 GB 16 GB also with the improved frequency right it is also uh, having a dual cut but um, um, when we had a combination of sim slot and dim slot you are seeing the dim slot here so it is having two cuts here one cut and here one cut in the same way in the memory models you have one cut and one cut so when we had a combination of both sim and rim to avoid the confusions the manufacturers provided two cuts okay but now the no motherboard is coming with the sim slot so what manufacturers did they removed the uh, two cuts and they are providing only one cut but it will not be at the center it will be just uh, shipped towards uh, right or left right so so that you are not um, reversing the connection left to right right to left it should be very careful okay and you should not damage the memory module so SDRAM was the first time to be in sync with the system clock so they made um, the frequency in such a way that uh, it is matching with the uh, system clock so here you can see different uh, DDR memories available uh, if you see um, one is um, DDR SD RAM which is it, is, it turns on 2.5 volt power and it has 184 pins DDR2 is faster already the DDR is a double data rate now DDR2 is faster than DDR SD RAM it is using 1.8 volts and it has 240 pins DDR3 is faster than DDR2 so as it improves it consumes less power and the pins also number of pins also increasing so if you see ddr ddr2 ddr3 the notches it is mentioned here so it is not in the same place right it is just moved a bit this is to avoid um, consuming the wrong memory module for the system suppose you don't know whether your system has ddr1 ddr2 ddr3 memory say you have a ddr2 memory uh, but uh, wrongly you purchased a ddr3 memory for upgrading so if you buy and uh, bring back to home and uh, insert it into the computer you cannot do it because the cut is um, uh, shipped right so it is not in the same place like ddr2 so what you have to do you have to return it and uh, you have to buy ddr2 ram and uh, upgrade it the best way is take a photo of it or uh, you take the memory module along with the good packaging and um, uh, show it to the show it to the uh, shopkeeper so he will provide you the correct memory module if at all you are not aware of uh, these kind of terminologies right so this is about ddr memory um, we had a so dim so this is so dim is nothing but uh, the memory module dim module for laptops right so in laptops also we'll be using the memory module same like your desktop but not in a big way right so it has to be very small in size and uh, high capacity so we are seeing the uh, ddr4 ecc so dim um, with higher capacity right 168 pin very sharp and um, it will be inserted into the motherboard it'll be in the flat surface so it will not be that much thick like your desktop right the memory will be inserted in the slanting way and it will occupy very less space yeah? but it will have higher capacity than your uh, desktop so this is so dim specifically made for um, the laptop or mobile devices so memory banks this concept was very much old but um, we should understand um, the uh, concept so it means that uh, e each variety had a, a memory bank concept like um, you should it should be having couple of slots together it, can, it cannot operate as a single module okay so we have to be having two four six eight something like that if i have uh, memory models as uh, five instead of four or instead of eight i have only five models it will not take it will take only four models together and the fifth model will be um, empty as such right so we had that kind of concept and we have to uh, pair it and insert it in the uh, slots only in rim slots we use uh, c rim uh, to insert a uh, dummy module right for just ensuring clock i mean uh, there is a closed circuit is happening so next is parity checking so parity checking is enabled in the memory for ensuring that uh, there is no mistake is happening in the data right so we are processing the data we are giving the input and we are taking the output so this parity bit parity bit will be associated with the data to ensure that whatever data is written 
it is in the correct format of the send, send information. So there should not be any mismatch in the parity bit. So uh, it will be used along with the data, right? It will be added with the data so that when we are writing, it will be verifying it whether the data is same or not. So if it is not matching, then we will declare that the data is corrupted. So we will have to resend the data or rewrite the data. So that is how um, it is going to function. For example, so the number of um, uh, bytes transmitted, the number of ones in the byte will be counted. So um, data is a comb combination of zeros and ones, right? So for any word, I will be counting the number of uh, zeros and ones based on which the parity will be generated. So the parity bit, for example, I am uh, mentioning it is an odd parity. Zero is an even parity, one is odd parity. So I am setting the uh, parity for the um, data. Um, and uh, it will calculate number of ones, even number of ones, then the parity set parity bit will be set as one. Okay. If it includes an odd number, then it is set for zero. So while uh, verifying the data, I will see um, how many number of ones are there, right? So it should be uh, whatever it is, right? So the parity bit will not be uh, corrupted. Only thing is the data for some reason the data is getting corrupted. So if I am not seeing even number of ones, uh, the parity bit says one, but um, the number of ones is not even. Maybe one is corrupted or two or three is corrupted. Overall number of ones is saying odd. Okay. So it means um, I, while verifying the parity bit, I am ensuring that uh, I am confirming that my data is corrupted. So I have to resend the data or rewrite, rewrite the data. So this is how the parity bit functions. So uh, I am taking a word, convert into binary form. I mean already it is converting into binary form. Check for number of ones, whether it is even numbers or odd numbers. If it is even numbers, set the parity bit as one. If it is odd numbers of ones, it parity bit zero. So number of ones like eight ones you have or ten ones you have, set the parity bit as one. You have seven ones, then set the parity bit as zero. Right, and while rewriting uh, or reading, you are seeing that parity bit is one by by the meaning it has to have even number of ones. It can be like um, uh, eight ones, right? If it is seven ones, you are seeing odd numbers, uh, but the parity bit is even. It means the data is corrupted. But the disadvantage here is if one bit corrupted, you can find out. So we had a eight ones, and because of that, we had a parity bit as one. But what happened? There are two ones corrupted. Now the number of ones will be six. Again, it is an even number. So as per parity bit, the data is correct. Whereas when you open the file, it will not open because the more number of bits are corrupted. Hope this is clear. So this is the parity um, checking. The next one is um, error correction code. So uh, how this CCC works is there is an algorithm running in the uh, system and uh, that is checking the uh, data which is um, written into the memory modules. Um, for 32 bits it is on 32 bits for 32 pin SIM and 64 bits for DIM. So the results will be stored in the ECC cluster separate uh, space, right? So if there is any um, uh, bit is getting corrupted in the memory module one bits or two bits we will not come to know whereas this algorithm will ensure that that is being corrected and um, um, the data is safe so we are we are getting the uh, perfect data from the memory model so there won't be any uh, problem so for the ecc to work how it is working first of all the bias sh should be supporting the ecc and uh, in cmos there is a setting available so normally we have two adjustments so we have to turn the parity checking as well as uh, ECC mode in the uh, bias so it is better to have both the things but uh, there may be slight uh, delay in your uh, calculation and uh, data storage but still you are getting the surety in the data right so it is better to enable both or at least enable ECC alone in the uh, system but normally nowadays whatever systems we are getting it is having that option default in the bias so you need not disturb the existing setting that is more than sufficient so with this um, we are completing the memory uh, module part one so here we have seen types of memory uh, volatile non-volatile 
different uh, uh, classes of memory available and um, uh, how the memory um, organized in the system the criteria is memory banking how to combine the memories and insert into the system all those things we have seen yeah we'll uh, discuss more in the uh, part two of the memory technologies thank